Skeletons are riding down the dark road at night. It is extremely quiet. The only sounds heard by the skeletons outside being the creak of the carriage and the soft clop of their horse's hooves. The skeletons then notice there is no sound at all and all the skeletons are now aware that there is someone unknown sitting beside them and they cannot see the other skeletons. Rowdy Skeleton looks over to a small hooded man sitting next to him, his legs kicking jovially over the side of the rear buck seat as the cobbles fly underneath. The moon catches on the figure's mask, something akin to a ghostly harlequin mask, with a mirthful smile and mischievous eyes with only darkness seen underneath. The mask is lined in what seems like shimmering darkness and even the man's clothes seem to share the same shimmering black runes. The being begins to converse with Rowdy and tells him how much he is missed in the great resting place of the famous thieves and assassins, how the life of the party has been stolen away from them. Of course I must say, I am quite cross that this little girl has stolen you away from me. But how can I be angry with such a heist as this one? He cries out with a sharp laugh, his hooded head tilting back slightly as he does so. The being then sighs and gives another short chuckle. Ah yes, I was holding this for safekeeping. Couldn't let it get into the wrong hands now, could we? And sets a small bundle on Rowdy Skeleton's lap. As Rowdy squints down and grabs the small bundle, he looks back up to the being to find nothing there except a faint echo of laughter on the wind. As Rowdy rolls the small package in his skeletal hands, it feels so familiar that Rowdy suddenly feels a ping of longing, as if he hasn't touched it in so many years. Rowdy gives it a gentle shake, and inside comes the song of a tinkling metal on metal, and he eyeballs it while shrinking back into the seat in order to inspect it. On top of the carriage is Drunken Skeleton, of course, and jovially he goes to turn to first the knoll and ask her if something seems off. But instead of first, there is a rather portly, balding monk sitting next to him, his sandaled feet waggling idly. The monk has small, slitted eyes, big rosy cheeks, and wisps of white hair all along the rim of his head. His robe is brown, stained from drink, and very commonly in design and material. Father O'Connell, what brings you here? Drunken Skeleton draws out in a slur, mimicking the monk's sitting position. The monk just laughs his belly shaking in time with him. You always wear a funny one. Never failed to make me nor anyone else laugh and brighten their day. Even in death, the monk says, and opens an eye as the wrinkled face looks over at Drunk Skeleton. The monk motions at Drunk Skeleton, his voice becoming almost sad. I don't like what's happened to you, but in the end, no one is really safe from the machinations of undeath, and worse things can happen than this. Aye, these are exceptional circumstances. Drunk Skeleton says, wiggling his bony fingers. The monk then leans in closer and whispers, Look, old friend, I'm not mad at what happened in that poor city. His shoulders shrug as he continues. Such things can happen, and will happen, but it is behind us now. All you can do is look forward and try to atone for the things that have transpired. As soon, whenever you're done here with that, the monk gives a devious chortle. Little girl's plans... Perhaps you can do something for a short time and repay the world for that little mistake, hmm? Aye, I can agree to that. But in my defence, they shouldn't have been drinking and carriaging, Drunk Skeleton says, holding a bony finger up. The monk shakes his head and laughs again, clapping the skeleton on the skull with his meaty hands. Drunk Skeleton feels a warm shudder down his bones, and his vision is jolted away from the monk. Rattling his skull, he quickly turns back to the monk, only to see a slight mist being carried away in the wind. Drunk goes to scratch his jaw, and a soft twink is heard, as a mug clinks against his jaw. Surprised, Drunk looks down at the tankard now in his hand, a large, robust, wooden construction, with a golden inlaid lid and golden bands running around it to keep it bound. On the thumb catch of the tankard is the stylized engraving of a monk, mid-cheer, the tankard oozing foam and quite happily drunk. Drunk Skeleton opens the catch and peers inside, expecting it to be full of some kind of brew, but instead finds that it is also made of gold, and it is able to hold a large amount of liquid. Where you go, he hears, and jumps, as First is now back next to him, and quite confused as to why the skeleton slapped his face and apparated a mug out of thin air, 
auspicious skeleton also has the same weird feeling. An agile skeleton is gone. Instead of seated next to him is a wild looking person that looks like they had been sleeping under a tree for centuries. As the reins jangle in his skeletal fingers, he takes stock of the figure, his sockets travelling over the form. The figure is wearing a deeply worn travelling cloak, perforated with sticks and leaves and other fauna that seem to merely grow green and vibrant. The figure wears no shoes, as he has no feet. Instead he notices that the figure has hooves and is furry to the waist in chestnut coloured fur that's heavily matted. Overall looks like a very rough character and doesn't move to look at Auspicious, arms still crossed against his chest. Time passes, the horse clopping merrily and Auspicious finally breaks the silence. Can I help you? Don't like it, don't like you, don't like her, don't like her stealing shepherd, don't like dead smell. The figure booms, its voice gravelly and aged, and still unmoving. What do you mean? The figure finally turns to look at Auspicious, and the figure's golden eyes lock onto the empty sockets of the skeleton. The figure could be called handsome, if not fair, if not for the heavy lines that adorned its face, and the long fangs that protruded down its lips. She took you! Me no like it! He points at Auspicious now, a long talon almost touching his nose cavity. But you... Still care for animals. Good. The figure's voice seems to soften slightly, before the figure points at the horses and the booming voice returns. Animals need looking after, but some animals suffer without you. Some animals lack in guidance. No one do what you do. The figure then recrosses his arms and looks back forward at the horses and the road ahead. Auspicious skeleton is hardcore what the fucking on the inside and is extremely confused as to what this bipedal grass muncher is after. When you done, you come home. Back to animals, back to forest, back to me. The figure roars again, and points at himself when he says back to me. Uh, what, sure, yeah, but I don't even know where to go to. Can someone show me where to go? Auspicious goes to say, stammering, but before he can go any further, the figure slaps the chest of the skeleton with the back of his strong hand. The skeleton rattles as the impact shakes his bones and whips his head over to see the figure lunge out of the carriage, leaving a trail of broken leaves before the being is simply swallowed by the trees lining the road. A suspicious skeleton is flabbergasted at the whole situation and goes to place his hand on his lap when he feels something there. Looking down for a moment, the skeleton grabs the staff that had been resting on his lap and holds it up slightly so he can look at it on the road. The staff is a very simple herding staff, made of cherry wood and with living vines wrapping all around the staff in intricate and ever-changing patterns, terminating at the head of the staff, which is carved to look like a very stylized fox head, with two very tiny citrons placed in the eyes. Huh? Nice! He says, and gives the staff a little wiggle. Lastly is Agile, almost snoozing on the seat before he noticed a large, sleek foot come into his vision. The skeleton looks up and visibly starts when he sees the sleek, tall woman who is sitting on top of the carriage, her feet resting on the bench below. Even more startling than her size is her face. She has long, shimmering hair braided tightly down her shoulders and very kind, lithe face, while her ears are very long, elvish ears that come to a delicate point near the back of her head. The only real issue the skeleton takes note of is the lack of mouth on her face, just smooth skin being where it should be. Um, I'm not good at steer. I cannot steer this good, he says and points at the horses, seeing that Auspicious is nowhere near him. The woman smiles with her eyes at him and the skeleton hears a voice in his head, a voice as soft as the rain and smooth as fresh cream. Do not worry, they know where to go. There's nothing you need to worry about. She purrs into his skull, and she leans back, looking up at the stars as they twinkle overhead, her arm resting on top of the carriage. How strange is it that here you are back again, gone from the dancing realm and back amongst the living? What a clever little necromancer she must be. She whispers the last part into his skull, and her eyes are twinkling with laughter, yet a subtle hint of rage to her eyebrows. Was I not supposed to be resurrectable? Agile Skeleton says nervously. The great being kind of bobs her head from side to side and he hears her rueful laughter in his skull, making it seem that, no, 
It was not her plan for Agile to ever come back to the world of the living after he was done in his life. Though I must admit, she coos, tracing her long delicate finger along the wood of the carriage's roof. I am jealous that you are back and able to dance amongst the living again. How nice that must be. Well, could be better. People keep making fun of my accent. And most of the time I can only dance in combat, Agile says angrily. But I always liked your accent. It's very unique. Yet you too, he rattles. But you're always getting into fights, eh? She asks, arching a long eyebrow. Yeah, wait, who are you? Agile skeleton questions, going to stand. Agile feels a large hand clap onto his bony shoulders. The tall woman leans down, placing a pair of black boots into his lap with a solid thunk. Wait, who are you? He says a bit more forcibly. The tall woman places a finger to where her lips would be and gives Agile Skeleton a wink before launching herself into a backflip and wheeling over the top of the carriage while the words, she will be awakened soon, echoes in his head. Mate, that's freaky, big ass tall woman. Just do a backflip like a fucking carriage. (laughs) Agile Skeleton stands up quickly and spins around, trying to find her, and whirls around to see Auspicious Skeleton sitting there holding his new staff. Agile, without a word to Auspicious, kicks off his old boots and slips on these new embossed boots, and they feel as if they were made just to fit his foot. With a bit more flesh in his foot, it would be a perfect fit, but a good fit nonetheless. DM notes. All of the skeletons have acquired a piece of gear from their past. Rowdy, the every key. Drunk, the mug of mirth. Auspicious, the forder staff. And agile, acrobatics boots. All of these items are tuned to the user and play very specific roles in the party. All of the skeletons snap out of their little moments all at the same time. And the Necroscope channel is now full of chatter as the skeletons try to figure out what the fuck happened when it is soon pierced by the dominant mental channel of the necromancer snapping awake from her little nap. What what happened? She blurts out into their skulls. Did I fall asleep? How long was I out? Good morning to you, Drunk says, leaning down over the side of the carriage and talking through the window. I've got to see where we are. Stop the carriage, she orders, and makes ready her instruments to figure out their location in relation to the map. As the stop, first the knoll hops off, and sprints into the forest for an unknown reason, while Kyla hops out with her tools and begins taking measurements. When she steps out, she sniffs the air, her eyebrows furrowing as she smells something odd. A suspicious skeleton is enthralled with his stick, looking at it and playing with it. Drunk skeleton and agile skeleton, elated at their new gear, begin to hit the fastest dabs on top of the carriage in celebration. (laughs) Rowdy skeleton begins to probe for proximity dabbing, and when the dabbing is detected, sets his every key in his sack and begins the attempt to outdab the other skeletons. All the gods agree that Rowdy has the fastest dab at the current moment. As Auspicious is fiddling with his staff, he feels something nuzzle at his elbow. Unbeknownst to him, he has triggered the staff's familiar, a fox made up of organic material. Its fur is whirling knots of branches, leaves, sticks and brush. Its nose is a small moat of rose quartz, and its eyes two glimmering citrons that shine with intelligence. Naturally, Auspicious picks it up and begins to pet it in earnest. What's up, little dude? The fox is not discontent with the pettings, and sits there, letting him pet it as much as he would like. So what can you do, little dude? The fox tilts its head, and speaks in a voice almost like the hush of wind moving through the limbs and leaves of trees. I do what you want me to do, the fox whispers. A furry's dream. <laughs> no. Is there anything you want? It asks, pawing at the skeleton's arm. Can you tell me about the staff? Do you know me? Auspicious asks, holding up the fox in a very Lion King-like manner. Of course I know you. We're old friends, you and I. The fox says grumpily. Then tell me who I am. Auspicious says excitingly. The fox looks over the skeleton's shoulder at the small girl taking measurements and narrows its citron eyes. I don't think I should do that right now, the familiar says. Okay, okay, not now, maybe later, the skeleton says, and tilts the fox creature back and forth. It's quite literally bushy tail, swaying back and forth. Kyla, however, has heard this unknown voice and is slowly leaning over into view, spying the little creature and mouthing, what the fuck? 
The voice and a suspicious skeleton look over at the necromancer, eyes and sockets blank. Hi, the skeleton says, slowly bringing the familiar to his chest. The necromancer blinks, shakes her head, and looks from auspicious to agile. Where did that staff come from? And where on earth did you get these fancy boots? A suspicious skeleton tucks the fox into his clothes. Would you believe if I said, I don't know. <laughs> How do I put this? Agile skeleton muses, crossing his boots in the runner of the carriage, leaning back lazily. There was a lady with a very elfy face and everything. I mean, a huge woman, right? And she gave me these boots and said she was jealous of me. Kyla stares at both of the skeletons and asks them if they can describe the beings in which both the skeletons begin to flimsily describe their benefactors. Exasperated, she looks up at the stars for a moment. Okay, dude, a giant woman, what else? Auspicious goes to say more about this dude. The fox places its paw on the skeleton's arm and looks up into his skull. Tell her nothing, it whispers, and gives its bushy tail a shake. You know what? I'm not even sure what I saw. I think I just blacked out for a minute and woke up with the staff. The skeleton says a little too earnestly, and the fox familiar looks smugly over at Kyla, who eyes the small creature with correct suspicion. Okay, fine. You don't remember, and Agile got his from a giant elf woman. All while I was asleep, and none of you noticed what was going on the entire time. Skeletons all answer in the affirmative, as Drunk and Rowdy also relay their stories of their benefactors, leaving them their little items. As she's tapping an instrument in her palm, Looking at the skeletons, she broadcasts to them that they're about 50 miles behind enemy lines and still have a ways to go, pack up all of their things, and then gets back into the carriage. After she gets back inside the carriage, first comes barreling out of the forest, fumbling with her pants and belt before clambering back on top of the carriage. Drunk looks over to her, raising a hand. Are you leave first here? She growls, pulling herself up over the edge and walking towards Drunk Skeleton pulling sticks and leaves from her fur. Aren't you supposed to be hiding anyway? The skeleton asks, bemused. The knoll plunking down next to him. First drinks water, unlike you, dead man. First has to do living business. She quips and busies herself with cleaning her clothes of the forest. Drunk stares at first, then slowly looks down at the mug in his hand. Lads, do we have any water? He broadcasts over the necroscope. I have some right here, Rowdy answers. Would you be a good lad and hand some up here? Rowdy grabs a canteen and stands up and goes to climb over the top of the carriage. He sees the back of First sitting next to Drunk. He's giving Rowdy a cheeky wave. Rowdy gives First a head tilted bruh look and sneaks up on the carriage with the canteen, handing Drunk the canteen while slav squatting behind First. Drunk pours the water into his tankard, which swirls for a moment before foam slowly arises to the top of the water and slops over the side of the mug gamely. The smell of fine brew permeating the air with its nutty aroma. Ooh, she got a nice head on her shoulders, the drunk skeleton murmurs, his skeleton teeth taking little nibbles at the foam. With a tilt, drunk drains half the tankard, the golden brew slashing down his bones messily. The effect, however, still applies, and the brew does its work on the skeleton regardless. With a hiccup, the skeleton hands the rest of the tankard to the knoll. First eyeballs the skeleton like, what, me, why me? And gives the side of the tankard a sniff and licks slightly at the foam on the side of the tankard. First also finds the liquid quite amusing, opening and closing it with the little kathunks a few times. Her ears perked. It's good for you, drink it, skeleton says. First blinks a few times. First never had beer, she whispers and opens the tankard lid once more, looking down inside and plunks her nose down into the fluid. Drunk skeleton snorts as the knoll laps noisily at the brew, foam building on the sides of her face and just under her eyes, before finally draining it dry and handing it back to Drunk, smacking her mouth as she does. The carriage also begins to move, making its way back down the road. First leans back, now very relaxed, and lays on her back, finding herself looking up into the skull of Rowdy. I see you were not game for the whole staying behind deal, the skeleton rattles, holding his fingers up to his skull in order to make an angry eyebrow. First just trills and grins and reaches down, grabbing the sack of coins Rowdy had given her and holds the sack to him, her tail thumping against the top of the carriage. Drunk Skeleton, however, is on a mission, filling the rest of his tankard up with the rest of the water and scurries to the side of the carriage. 
with what can pass agility amongst rocks. He is able to hang down from the roof to the side of the carriage, knocking lightly at the window with the tankard. Omen, Kyla and Chiron look up at the skeleton, playing cards in their hands, and all of their eyes are wide at the sudden spooky appearance of Drunk Skeleton hanging down from the roof. Drunk, with a big skeletal grin, waggles the tankard at the necromancer. Kyla opens the window and has to hold her head at the weird angle in order to fit her broken horn through it, but manages and asks the skeleton what he's doing hanging out the side of the carriage while it's moving, her hair whipping around her face. Well, I just so happened to find a magical lucky cup of potion and he gestures at her very bad card hand with the tankard. I'd be thinking you might need it, eh? The necromancer looks up at the cup, furrowing her brows, then looks back at the drunken skeleton. You didn't just find that cup, did you? She yells over the wind and noise of the carriage. Of course, I found it in the pile of gear. The necromancer begins to try and detect whether or not the skeleton is lying by probing his mind a little, but he manages to keep her away from the truth enough that she finally relents. After looking back at her horrible spades hand and frowning, Drunk Skeleton winks at her as best he can and manages to roll high enough to convince the necromancer to take the mug and have a mighty swig. Kyla sniffs at the brew, her body jolting as she's hanging out of the window, and Drunk Skeleton has to push her head back through the window into the carriage as a tree limb smacks him on the side of the skull with a hollow thunk. After a bit of inspecting the cup and having a few goes with the satisfying sound of the tankard's lid, the necromancer finally dips the tankard to her lips and takes a long pull from the vessel, her eyes hooding and her head tilting further and further back as she drinks of it feeling compelled to empty it before setting it down. The luscious foam spills down the left side of her mouth before she tilts her head forward with a cool ah, and releasing the lid of the tankard and a hollow thunk echoing from the empty space within. The effect is immediate and even the skeletons themselves feel the good vibes, permeating their own minds from the suddenly relaxed aura of the necromancer. The tension and stress from the journey seem to melt away from them and as it melts away from Kyla as well, she sits back down to her card game, the mug in between her legs as she sits, and she continues playing. That's when all the skeletons begin to hear internal things. It seems that with the relaxation of the body and mood, her mind has let down a few of its guards as well, and some thoughts are flowing openly. Thoughts about how she hates the Noel. Thoughts about how she never liked card games and how she never has good luck. And that the only reason she is playing is because Omen asked her so politely to play and how her freckles make interesting patterns on her face. Agile and Auspicious Skeleton look at each other. Rowdy lunges for the other side of the carriage to get a look at what's going on inside, and Drunk Skeleton takes another whack from the bush as he tries to readjust himself to get a better look inside. Rowdy and Drunk sees Kyla look up with a furtive glance at Omen before looking back down at her cards, then back up again. Told you it was a good idea to bring her along, says Agile via Necroscype and all the skeleton minds are filled with the sudden burst of embarrassed anger, and the guard slams down on all of them. Raucous Australian and Scottish laughter roar outside of the carriage, and the other skeletons join in as well. Agile Skeleton finds a speaking channel between the driver and the main part of the carriage, and antagonises the necromancer, as Drunk Skeleton has to reach in and fight to get his tankard back, while another tree limb whacks off his bony backside. Omen and Kyla take the opportunity to look at each other's cards and trade a few around before anyone has the chance to notice. After much chaos, everyone returns to their places and Drunk has recovered his tankard, returning to his roost on top of the carriage. Sometimes on the journey, Kyla asks Drunk for more of the brew, but it is chastised playfully by the skeleton he says she can't handle her drink. First is just passed out, snoring on top of the carriage and stays that way lolling from side to side as the carriage rocks. Time passes, the night turning into the early morning hours, when Drunk Skeleton spies light from atop his perch. He focuses on the lights and is able to spot people and wagons in the distance, and alerts the carriage to the approaching forces. Battle stations are raised, and all the skeletons pull up their hoods or check their face wrappings to make sure they are all well hidden. First the knoll was not too keen on being seen by these men, as she's quite exposed and scrambles down to the side of the carriage, opens the door, and flings herself feet first into the carriage. The knoll slams bodily into Kyla, Chiron, and Omen, causing a dog pile in the carriage as the door swings in the wind. Rowdy Skeleton swings himself in next, 
twisting mid-leap to grab the door and slam it shut as he does so. Him coming in feet first is another problem. As he kicks first in the small of the back and sends her spinning into the opposite side of the carriage, upside down and feet smacking against the windows. The women fare a little better, now having a heavily armoured skeleton landing on top of them. Too close, they hear in their skulls, and Rowdy looks down to see Kyla mashed underneath Omen, her eyes full of panic and bewilderment. Rowdy just snorts. Kyron is able to right herself and snaps the curtains shut in the carriage and lowering the lantern lights to try and hide as much as possible. Agile, auspicious and drunk skeleton are sweating calcium as they near the wagon train, doing their best to look non-threatening, and the fox familiar takes a shelter inside the clothes of auspicious. The driver and people on the horseback wave cheerfully at the skeletons, who wave back with gloved hands and nod their heads. So far, no suspicions has been aroused, and inside the carriage things are tense as everyone tries to keep low and out of sight. Kyla is having the worst of it, as Omen is taking her job as bodyguard too seriously, and Kyla is broadcasting spurts of panic every minute as she struggles to get free. As the train passes, some of the skeletons begin to look inside the wagons, as they look very familiar. Inside the wagons are lengths of chains and leg shackles, and all the skeletons bristle as they realise that what this wagon train is heading down for. Cooler heads prevail, and everyone keeps their head down low, despite the burning rage and them inside their rib cages, relaying information to Rowdy and the necromancer inside the carriage. The wagon passes by, wagon after wagon after wagon, all the drivers and the escorts looking like normal folk just doing a job, and no real military insignia noticed anywhere, lightly armed and armoured. Drunk Skelton has had enough of doing nothing and stand up tall and proud from atop his perch on top of the carriage and throws out his arms. At first it's a fizzle and his bones give a light froth of beer foam but with a secondary try a tidal wave of drunk aura echoes from the carriage in a radiating miasma and sucker punches half of the wagon train. Utter chaos would be an understatement as wagons crane into the forest and shatter against the trees or horses and their riders just flop to the ground, their brains scattered by the sudden violent inebriation. What in the name of Avarice is heard from the ever nearing end of the wagon trail, and all the skeletons feel a cold chill run down their spines. At the end of the wagon trail is a completely unaffected and old paladin of Avarice, the paladin holding up his hands for the carriage to stop, and auspicious wanting to not arouse suspicion, slows the horses to a halt. The paladin's great charger clops towards the carriage as the paladin on top surveys the disruption of men stumbling across the road into trees, horses flailing on the ground and one man going, up you go lad, I gotcha, come on, as he drunkenly tries to help his horse up off the ground, which gives out a short fart and a hiccup. Agile Skeleton is nearest to the paladin and pulls his hood down lower to try and cover his face. Agile Skeleton calls out and holds his hands out in greeting. As the paladin draws near, the paladin can sense something unholy about this carriage and its riders and gets right up next to Agile Skeleton before whipping off his hood with a flourish of his armoured hand. The skeleton locks sockets with the paladin, who sputters in astonishment at the undead beings staring up at him. There's Scottish war cry from above as Drunk Skeleton launches himself off the proverbium top ropes. Welcome to the bone zone, brother! As the skeleton body slams the paladin off his horse. The fight is remorseless as the skeleton scramble off the carriage from inside the carriage and first pulls out her short sword as she runs towards the fight. The paladin is accosted on all sides and has to try and invoke between strikes. However, he is failing to gain his blessing of Arvis again and again. His charger, now unmanned, lets training take over and charges Rowdy, knocking him almost 10 feet through the air and causing him to get stuck under the carriage first tries to defend him and catches a steel shod of hoof to the forehead for her troubles. First is out cold and bleeding from the head, laying limp on the ground. Drunk, agile and auspicious are tearing the paladin to shreds. Agile skeleton dances and weaves through the paladin's holy strikes, giving him a double middle finger on the last matrix style dodge and calling him a dumb cunt <laughs> as he did. Drunk then gets him in an arm hold and begins pummeling his elbow and arm armour. Shattering his arm and the paladin still manages to hold on to his holy arbiter's hammer. Auspicious skeleton pulls out his fucking chungus of a torch slash hammer now 
and every swing that makes contact with a paladin shears off entire armour plates and sparks off energy arc off the strikes in all manners of golds and purples. Omen, Chiron and Kyla jump out finally, see the fucking madness going on and the energies discharging. Kyla sees it's a paladin and hops her happy ass back to the carriage, Omen following her orders from Agile. Chiron, however, sees a huge ass horse and is like, oh that's mine, and runs over. Agile checks on first, sees she is breathing, but is knocked over by the charger onto its back. After two fucking natural twenties back to back, he charms the horse into submission and pets the great beast's nose. The paladin can't roll to save his life, and while bleeding from the face and body, gives one last attempt to invoke his god's power. It's a three. <laughs> <laughs> Arvorous has abandoned him, it seems. Despair takes over the old paladin, and he stares at his hammer in his hands before Drunk breaks his arm wholly, and the hammer pangs to the ground, and Aspicious casts a moonlit shadow onto him, raising his torch hammer high. With a sickening crack, the hammer lands hard on the old paladin's back, and snaps it like it was dry kindling, and the paladin falls limply to the ground with a crash of broken armour and bone. Drunk drops the man's arm and dusts himself off. The wagon train is still fucked and stumbling around, completely out of battle. The skeletons go to loot the paladin, but find they are unable to touch or loot any of the paladin's belongings. Auspicious's torch hammer has seemed to sucked up some of the paladin's power and is now glowing. Neat! Everyone loads into the carriage, Drunk and Rowdy carrying first back into the carriage and helping her inside, and both of them hop in as well. Kyron hops on top of the charger and is running back and forth with them like a child that has a new toy. Auspicious and Agile pull down their hoods like the gangsters they are and chuck the horse back into movement, clopping away from the broken old man and the drunken ones behind them. Rowdy and Drunk Skeleton are really worried about first and find a canteen filling the tankard with the water and watching as the foam roars and fizzes over the side of the lip as it powers ignite once again. Drunk goes to place the tankard's lip to first slips, Rowdy and everyone else watching carefully. Kyla perks up and looks around, her head twisting here and there before finally catching something in her eyes and watching it. The old monk has returned and is leaning over with Drunk, his old wrinkled eyes still cheerful and full of mirth. Easy now, the monk says and runs a small finger through the foam. Remember, it can heal and make merry, but it also eases the passing of the dying, the monk says a little more glumly, but his eyes never cease their smile. Drunk skeleton swallows internally and opens the lid again, holding it to the gnoll's lips. Frantic party sounds as Drunk's player psyching himself up for the roll. The gnoll takes a deep pull, the foam and some of the liquid pouring down the side of her furry face and dripping on her bloody shirt. The huge gash in her forehead from the hoof strike slowly knitting back together and the impact wounds from the road spitting out their rocks and gravel. There you go, the monk says, patting drunk in the back with a ghostly hand and whispers to him, knew you were the hero I knew you to be, and fades away, Kyla's eyes still following him as he does. Everyone holds their breath, waiting, as first coughs and sputters, throwing foam into drunken skull. A few moments pass, before first opens her eyes and smiles, reaching up and patting Drunk's arm and looking over at Rowdy. First all okay, is all she manages, before slumping into a sleep. Skeletons all breathe, in quotations, a sigh of relief. Omen joining them, before Kyla and the necromancer look up at Drunk. You know, I got an injury as well. You can go ahead and fill that tankard back up and... No you don't, Drunken Skeleton says, and thunks the lid back down. Kyla smiles grimly at him and wrinkles her nose in anger as she tries to make Drunk give her the mug, but it seems the tankard has something else behind it when it comes to Wills. The necromancer finally relents, rolls her eyes and begins to argue with Drunk on how she should have access to the tankard since she's the necromancer. The arguing is quite loud and again Agile and Auspicious look at each other in confusion as Kyron goes flying past in the charger again, galloping down the road. Some hours pass. Kyla's still having not gotten her drink, and everyone's settling in for the ride, and miles pass as the sun finally begins to rise higher, and higher, into the morning. Agile Skelton spots more figures on the horizon, and calls out the alarm mentally, 
And again, everyone makes ready inside the carriage to make sure no one can see inside. Chiron takes the charger and launches herself into the bush on the side of the road, hiding herself from view as she travels. This time, there are what seems to be a company upon company of soldiers marching down the road. There are generals and leadership CEOs on horseback at the front with their honour guard. The skeletons wave or salute, passing their checks and moving past without incident, as more and more troops march past them as they travel. It becomes clear that this is a siege army of crack veteran trippers, all bearing multiple campaign ribbons on their standards and giving off pure aura of professionalism. Even worse are the huge trains of siege engines and other supplies for prolonged warfare. And even scarier still are huge ogre-like creatures wreathed in heavy metal armour and holding great hammers, their standard bearing the name Door Knockers. Everyone in the party shivers with true fear as this is the greatest siege army that's going to break the backs of the southern alliances. The formation seems to go on for miles as they pass the baggage train, which on the tail end is made up of long tendrils of slaves, tethered to each other with minders. Possibly the workforce behind making the siege engines go are doing the work no one else wanted to do. Kyla peers around her curtains and looks at the slaves. In their skulls, they get their first tree image of Kyla's mother, Agile and auspicious, scoring the crowd for the soft faced woman that Kyla knows. So, this is why you brought us here, Rowdy says, looking over at the necromancer's face. This is a rescue mission, says Drunk, leaning over to a curtain and peering out. This army is going to blow through the town like a fucking hurricane, murmurs Auspicious, as the long formation finally breaks and open road is ahead of them. The skeletons all agree that they should have time to find Kyla's mother and make their way back to help defeat this army somehow, but the guilt of those who will most definitely die weigh on them. With a jolt, Auspicious looks down at his fox familiar, and relays his plan to the other skeletons. All agree, and Auspicious tells the fox familiar to find Chiron, and tell her to ride hard to the villages, towns, and refugee camp, and tell them what's on the way, and that they should run. The familiar nods, and leaps off the carriage with a whoosh, and disappears into the brush, moving past. The skeletons are all silent, knowing, fearing, unsure, but sealed in their resolve and the current mission. A few moments pass before the familiar comes running back inside the carriage and hops back into the runners, making its way to Auspicious and relaying to him that he found the girl and she's riding hard back towards friendly territory. The party look at whom they can and nod and they continue their journey. The sun rises and awakens the day casting sunshine and heat on the backs of those in the siege train. It also lights the way for a girl, riding hard on a stolen horse and holding in her hands the survival of thousands of people who know not what death blow marches towards them. The skeletons, bowing their heads, wish the wind to carry her faster on her journey.